On January 2, 2024, an explosion occurred south of the capital of Lebanon, Beirut. Lebanese state media reported that the Hamas office was damaged at the scene. The terrorist group announced the death of its leader, Saleh al-Aruri, who is associated with the military activities of terrorists. Along with him, six more members of the group also died, including two commanders. Lebanese authorities blame Israel for the strike. I will not respond to what has been said here or elsewhere. We have been focused on fighting Hamas from the very beginning and we will continue to do so. And we will update the public information when necessary. The terrorist group Hezbollah, which operates in Lebanon and periodically shells Israeli territory, also threatens Israel. They say they will not leave the incident unanswered. At the same time, the Yemeni Houthis continue terrorist activities in the Red Sea. Since October, they have been launching drones and missiles at ships that are associated with Israel or heading to Israeli ports. This time, according to the U.S. Central Command, two anti-ship ballistic missiles were fired. They are constantly fed by the Iranians and even the North Koreans through Iran. That's why they have drones, coastal-launched anti-ship missiles and even ballistic missiles. At the same time, they also have a business, as I understand it, since they don't have their own sources of serious income. They liked the idea of piracy. The Houthis also say they are targeting another container ship heading to an Israeli port. Experts see the activities of the Houthis as the problem not only for regional scale. The UN is gathering at an emergency meeting to discuss the situation in the Red Sea. The problem, I think, is much worse since we are talking about freedom of navigation in general. In some of other states, groups that behave, to put it mildly, not in accordance with international laws and rules, see that the Houthis are succeeding in extracting political assets from this and making money. Then others will begin to follow their example. As terrorist groups continue to undermine stability in the region, Israel is consulting with the United States about the post-war future of the Gaza Strip, NBC News reports. According to the channel, any development of events after the elimination of Hamas will gradually include the delivery of humanitarian aid. At the same time, the EU's chief diplomat, Joseph Borrell, speaks of the need for intervention by the international community to resolve the situation. The tragedy that occurred in Gaza teaches us that the solution must come from outside. International community, including the USA, Europe and Arab countries, the opposing sides will never be able to reach an agreement. In the north of the Gaza the Strip, Israel has established almost complete control. Also, according to the IDF, several thousand Israeli troops will return to their bases for rest and training. Military experts note that this indicates a gradual winding down of hostilities in some areas of the sector. Reported by Nikita Skoblikov, Halina Babenko, UATV News.